Human evolution is a fascinating subject that continues to yield new insights. In today's video, we'll discuss eight surprising facts about human evolution that may change how you see our past. We'll dive into some common misconceptions and recent discoveries that shine a new light on our evolutionary journey. From our connections with other primates to the hidden factors still influencing our bodies today, these facts will give you a fresh perspective on what it truly means to be human. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up to support the channel. Now let's get started. We didn't evolve from apes. One common misconception about human evolution often causes confusion. Many people believe humans evolved directly from apes, but that's not the case. In reality, humans and today's apes share a common ancestor, and our evolutionary paths split millions of years ago. Around six million years ago, our lineage branched off from the one that led to chimpanzees and gorillas. From that point on, both lines evolved independently. Humans developed traits like walking on two legs, larger brains, and the use of complex tools, while modern apes evolved their own unique characteristics. Interestingly, we share over 90% of our DNA with chimpanzees, who are our closest living relatives. But this genetic similarity reflects our shared ancestry, not a direct evolutionary descent. So it's more accurate to think of apes as our evolutionary cousins rather than our ancestors. Number seven, you are actually less than half human. Believe it or not, you're actually less than half human. It sounds crazy, but scientists have discovered that only about 43% of your body is made up of human cells. The rest, it's a bustling community of microorganisms we call the microbiome. These tiny creatures aren't just freeloaders. They're hard at work in your body, especially in your gut. Think of them as a dedicated team of helpers, always on the job to keep you healthy. They break down food, fight off harmful germs, and even influence your mood. Without them, we'd be in trouble. Your gut bacteria are particularly busy. They tackle the tough carbs you eat, whip up essential vitamins, and give your immune system a workout. They even have a say in how you think and feel and how your body handles energy from food. Your microbiome is as unique as your fingerprint. What you eat, how you live, where you hang out, and even your genes all shape your personal microbial community. This is why that salad might make your friend feel great but leave you feeling bloated. This new understanding has scientists exploring exciting new treatments, from probiotics to something called fecal transplants. We're full of evolutionary leftovers. Human evolution is a complex process that has shaped our bodies over millions of years. One fascinating aspect of this process is the presence of evolutionary leftovers, also known as vestigial traits. These are features that once served important functions in our ancestors, but have become largely obsolete or repurposed in modern humans. The appendix is a prime example of a vestigial organ in humans. This small, finger-shaped pouch connected to the large intestine is thought to have played a significant role in digestion for our distant ancestors. In herbivorous animals, the appendix is much larger and aids in breaking down cellulose-rich plant matter. However, as human diets evolved and our digestive system adapted, the appendix's original function became less critical. Today, while it may play a minor role in immune function and maintaining gut bacteria, its removal generally doesn't impact overall health. Wisdom teeth are another vestigial trait that illustrates how our bodies are still catching up with our changing lifestyles. These third molars were crucial for our ancestors who had larger jaws and needed extra grinding power for their tough, fibrous diets. However, as human diets softened and our jaws became smaller over time, wisdom teeth have become problematic for many people. They often emerge in a mouth too small to accommodate them, leading to overcrowding, misalignment, and potential health issues. This is why wisdom teeth removal is a common dental procedure in many parts of the world. The coccyx, or tailbone, presents an interesting case of evolutionary repurposing. Our early primate ancestors used tails for balance and mobility in trees. As humans evolved to walk upright, we lost the need for a tail, but the coccyx remained. Rather than disappearing entirely, it found a new purpose. Today, the coccyx serves as an anchor point for various muscles and ligaments in the pelvic area, playing a role in our ability to sit comfortably and maintain posture. Even our ability to wiggle our ears is a leftover from ancestors who could move their ears to locate sounds, a skill we've lost as our neck mobility increased. Now, number five, goosebumps are mostly useless. Have you ever wondered why we get goosebumps? This peculiar bodily reaction which makes our skin look like a plucked chicken, is actually an evolutionary leftover from our hairier ancestors. Long ago, our predecessors had much more body hair than we do now. 
When they felt cold, their bodies would trigger a helpful reflex. Tiny muscles at the base of their hair follicles would contract, causing their fur to stand up. This clever trick created a layer of trapped air around their bodies, providing extra insulation against the cold. It's the same principle that makes a puffy jacket warm. The air pockets between the fibers trap heat and keep the cold out. This reflex wasn't just for warmth, though. When our ancestors faced danger, the same reaction would make them appear larger and more intimidating to predators. As humans evolved, we lost most of our body hair. However, the reflex that causes hair to stand up stuck around. That's why we still get goosebumps when we're cold, scared, or sometimes even when we're moved by powerful emotions. The problem is, without a thick coat of fur, goosebumps don't really do much for us anymore. The tiny hairs on our arms and legs are too fine and sparse to trap any significant amount of warm air. When we get goosebumps from being cold, it's basically our body trying to fluff up a coat we no longer have. It's like trying to inflate a jacket with holes all over it. Not very effective. So why do we still have this reflex if it's not useful? Evolution is a slow process, and not every trait that loses its primary function disappears right away. Sometimes features stick around long after they've stopped being helpful. Goosebumps are a perfect example of this evolutionary lag. Number four, Darwin didn't get everything right. Charles Darwin's contributions to our understanding of evolution are undeniable. His groundbreaking work on the origin of species laid the foundation for modern evolutionary biology. However, like many scientists of his time, Darwin held views that we now recognize as flawed, particularly regarding race and gender. In his 1871 book, The Descent of Man, Darwin ventured into more controversial areas by speculating on supposed differences between human races and genders. These ideas were not based on scientific evidence, but reflected the biases and limited understanding of 19th century society. For example, Darwin suggested that certain racial groups had superior intellect or heightened senses. He wrote, The Eskimo and other natives of the Arctic regions have an extraordinarily keen sense of smell, a claim that modern science has debunked. Research now shows that cognitive or sensory differences are greater within racial groups than between them, with no evidence to support Darwin's assertions. Darwin also reinforced gender stereotypes of his era, suggesting men were intellectually superior to women. He claimed, the chief distinction in the intellectual powers of the two genders is shown by man's attaining to a higher eminence in whatever he takes up than can woman. This view overlooked the barriers women faced in accessing education and opportunities in Victorian society. Darwin's claims about race and gender have since been discredited by advancements in genetics, anthropology, and cognitive science. Today, research shows that cognitive abilities and sensory perception do not vary significantly by race or gender. Our species arose about 300,000 years ago. Our human story is like a puzzle that scientists are constantly piecing together. For a long time, we thought we knew when and where our species, Homo sapiens, first appeared. But in 2017, a surprising discovery changed everything we thought we knew. Before this discovery, scientists believed that our species was about 200,000 years old. They based this on some very old human remains found in Ethiopia. These bones were the oldest examples of Homo sapiens that we knew about, so everyone thought that's when our species began. But then, scientists found an even older skull in Morocco. This skull was about 300,000 years old. That's 100,000 years older than what we thought before. This discovery didn't just change when we think humans first appeared. It also changed where we think humans came from. Before, many people thought humans all started in one place in Africa, like a single birthplace for our species. They called this place the cradle of humanity. Now, scientists think it's not that simple. Instead of one cradle, there might have been many. The new idea is that early humans probably evolved in different places all over Africa at about the same time. It's like saying our species had many birthplaces instead of just one. This new understanding is exciting, but it also shows us how much we still don't know. Number two, but morning sickness might have a purpose. Have you ever wondered why some pregnant women experience morning sickness? For a long time, people thought it was just an annoying side effect of pregnancy, but now scientists think morning sickness might actually be helpful. When a woman is pregnant, her body goes through many changes. One common change is feeling sick, especially in the early months. This is called morning sickness, even though it can happen at any time of the day. Many people used to think this was just the body reacting badly to pregnancy hormones. But now researchers have a new idea. 
They think morning sickness might be the body's way of protecting the growing baby. How? By making the mother avoid certain foods that could be dangerous. In the past, before we had refrigerators, some foods could be risky to eat. Things like meat and eggs could go bad quickly and make people sick. This was especially dangerous for pregnant women because their babies were just starting to grow and were very sensitive. So the body came up with a clever solution. It made pregnant women feel sick when they smelled or thought about these foods. This way, they would avoid eating them and stay safe. It's like the body's own safety alarm. Today, we have refrigerators and other ways to keep food safe, but our bodies still work the same way they did thousands of years ago. That's why pregnant women still get morning sickness. Of course, this doesn't make morning sickness any more fun for pregnant women, but understanding why it happens might help them feel a bit better about it. It's not just a random discomfort, it's their body working hard to protect their baby. Number one, we're not done evolving. You might think that human evolution is something that happened long ago, but guess what? We're still changing. Our bodies are still adapting to the world around us, and scientists can now track these changes in our genes. Let's look at how we're still evolving and what it means for us. First, it's important to understand that evolution doesn't stop. As long as our environment changes, our bodies will try to keep up. Scientists have found ways to look at our genes and see how they've changed over time. One great example of recent human evolution is our level of lactose tolerance. A long time ago, most adults couldn't digest milk well. But over the past 2,000 years, that's about 100 generations, something interesting happened especially among British people. More and more people develop the ability to drink milk without getting sick. This change occurred because of a shift in a single gene. But it's not just about milk. Our bodies are likely changing in other ways too, adapting to our modern way of life. For example, some scientists think our bodies might be adapting to deal with the foods we eat today or the pollutants in our environment. The exciting thing is that we don't know exactly how we'll continue to evolve. As our world keeps changing, our bodies will keep trying to adapt. Maybe in the future, we'll develop new abilities that help us thrive in our changing world. So there you have it. Eight surprising facts about human evolution. Which of these facts fascinates you the most? Tell us in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.